tonight is January the 12th, 2014. I've been asked more than once to describe as best I can the instruments that I have and, and what they mean. And I wish I had seen a video like this when I first started buying this equipment. But I'll, I'll do the best I can, as quick as I can. Uh, all of this equipment is made by Tektronix right here in, in this cabinet. It's actually called a uh, mainframe. There's two types of mainframes that uh, Tektronix builds. There's the TM5000 series, and then there's the uh, TM5000 hundred series. All of these modules right here are TM500 series modules. Like this one is a, I hope you can read these. This is called a DC503A. Well DC stands for uh, digital counter, 503A. Then there's a DM502A, which stands for digital meter. This is an FG 501A function generator 501 function generator 504 all of the 500 series will plug into a TM500 series module this happens to be a TM506 uh, because it has six bays in it one two three four five six so this is a double wide function generator but the 500 series. Now if you go down to here, this is a TM5000 series, 5006, because it has six bays in it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now this is a SG, signal generator, 505. Another signal generator, SG505. This is an AA501 audio analyzer, 501. This is a DM5010. See, it's a 5000 series. Now, the way this works is you can plug any 500 module series into a 5000 series mainframe but not the other way around. See, this is a 5000 series. This is a digital meter, DM5010. It will only plug into this module. It's mechanically impossible to plug this uh, 5000 series into the 500 series, but not the other way around. So if you get a, a 5000 series mainframe, you can plug anything into it. The last number is the number of bays in it, two, four, six. For example, I have another one right over here. See, this is a 500 series, but it would be a, a, a TM503, because it's got three bays. Now these, uh, this one's called a SG502, signal generator model 502, signal generator 503, signal generator 504. What this gives me is these three oscillators lets me go down to, I uh, guess, let's see, times 10. The lowest it'll go is, uh, I think, 0.5. So it's like from 5 hertz, these three together, to over 1 gigahertz. Just a little bit over a gigahertz. They're just absolutely beautiful. I love them. So that's why I have these three oscillators in this particular uh, cab. This is my oscillator module, you might say. And uh, this is my audio stuff. Signal generator. The signal generator SG505s are some of their best ones. They have uh, eight parts per million, 0.008% THD. These meters right here, all I use this one for is just a voltmeter. Uh, and uh, digital counter I, I hardly use that anymore uh, this little digital meter 502a is actually really nice it it, so it 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 will probably do everything for you this one will do everything for you that this one will and they're a lot cheaper function generator this one will do everything for you that this one will except this one will scan 
this one will not scan. But this will give you a square wave, sine wave, and a triangular wave. This will give you all that kind of stuff plus a little bit more. And like I say, you can scan frequencies with it, a start and a stop frequency. Okay. Uh, th this is just simply a digital counter. It's uh, they're really pretty inexpensive out on eBay. This is a CFC 250. I think its top frequency is uh, 150 megahertz or 100 megahertz. I'm not sure. And then they make one right above that, which is this guy right here. It goes up to 1.3 gigahertz. Uh, I use this one for RF, but mostly this one for audio because it has a, a, a straight numerical readout where this one has a decimal point in it, and I hardly ever use this one. Now, there's a couple of uh, really nice Hewlett Packard spectrum analyzers out to be bought. This is the 3580A. It goes from 5 hertz to 50 kilohertz, and this is pretty much, I think, the one to have for audio. The one right above it is the 3582 or 4, darn, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember. And I think it goes from like 20 hertz to 40 megahertz. They're absolutely beautiful instruments, but I believe this one is the cat's meow for uh, audio work, if that's what you want to do. I'm not going to try to get into all the details of it. This is a beautiful Tektronix 2467 scope. Um, it's a 350 megahertz scope. It's uh, It's got a brain. It's a little bit microcontrolled, so it's okay. But here's some really neat things about it. See this delta time right here? If I press that, watch what happens. See, the, the, uh, the cursors come up, and I can move the cursor wherever I want. Let's say I put one there, and I put one right there, which would be one cycle. It tells me that it's uh, uh, 1032.5 microseconds. Actually, I think I'm putting it at about 985 hertz. I'm looking up at it right now. And then if I press both of these buttons at the same time, it'll give me the reciprocal of that. Whoops, that wasn't. There it is, microseconds. There it is, 968 hertz. If I want to know the amplitude, I just press delta uh, volts right here, and the cursor's change to uh, vertical. Then I can put the top one right there and the bottom one right there. Well, I'm, I'm turning these two knobs right here and I put the bottom one right there. It says it's uh, well I got them reversed so it says it's negative. Let's do it right here. So it says 276 millivolts peak to peak. So that is those instruments. Another gorgeous instrument, I think, is this 7904 oscilloscope. Again, this is, this is a mainframe, and then you can buy all of these plug-in modules for it. The way this thing is laid out is this is a vertical channel, this is a vertical channel, this is a horizontal channel, and a horizontal channel. So it's got two vertical channels here, two horizontal channels here. Now this spectrum analyzer, this is called a, a 7L12, it goes up to 1.8 gigahertz, just a gorgeous instrument. Um, it being a double wide and it being an instrument that operates all by itself, it does not need this vertical channel, it does not need this time base. So it has to span between a vertical channel and a, and a horizontal channel. That's why it plugs into the middle. If I want to use this channel, if I want to make just a regular oscilloscope out of it and use this channel right here and this time base right here, I select left. So th this right here is selecting one of these two channels. And then horizontal mode is selecting one of these two channels. So I say right. So now by pressing this one, I've selected here by pressing this one I've selected here. This one is not being used now. I've eliminated it by using the buttons up here. But if I say had another vertical channel right here, which would be another plug-in unit, all these are different plug-in units. You can see they're half size. They would plug in, if it's a vertical channel, it'd plug in here. Like this is a simply a, 
This is a vertical channel that's only 50 ohms. Uh, here's a uh, another vertical channel, uh, which is I think 7826. I think that's what's already plugged into there. And then here is some sort of a, uh, well this is another time base. This would plug in the right hand side. So I could actually do this. I'm not going to try to do this. I can either plug this one in here, right here, or if I pull this center module out, the spectrum analyzer, I can plug it in there. And I can have two time bases at the same time, and I can select between them. It's really pretty versatile. It's really a beautiful instrument. I think back in its day, the 7904, around the 1983 or so time frame, was like $8,000 without any plug-ins. And you can get these things on eBay for a song it's, it's just some really beautiful stuff and then you can buy all of the plug-in units that you want to do what you want now some of these spectrum analyzers are still not very cheap I think back when these things were new they were twelve fourteen thousand dollars a piece so it was pretty staggering only the government and their contractors could afford them fortunately I was one of their contractors so I got to use this stuff back uh, in in the day and now for pennies on the dollar I can own them so that's why I have them and that's why I love them because this is what I use during my work anyway two vertical channels two horizontal channels now this being the 7L12 this is up to 1.8 gigahertz of a, um, a spectrum analyzer I had it actually running there it is I don't know if I've got a very good display here I may have bumped it a bit but what I'm looking at right there is the um, Turn light on is the entire FM band. It's got things like baseline clippers, and you can eliminate that noise at the bottom or leave it there, whatever you want. This is so I'm basically scanning from 88 to 108 megahertz. If I move it up a little bit, let me see if I can do this without. Yeah, see, I have a 30 kilohertz resolution that's the width of the pulse at 2 megahertz per division. So I'm starting at about 88 megahertz. These things are actually quite accurate, the, the, the mechanics of it. So if this is my first pulse over here at 88 megahertz, right here, then uh, if we set that there, 88, this would be 90, 92, 94, 96, 98, 100, 2, 4, 6, 8. So I'm scanning the whole FM band right there. Now, I happen to like... Uh, a station over in Mexico, over in Juarez, Mexico, because I'm in El Paso, Texas, and it happens to be at uh, 105.1, so I'm generating a signal here at 0 dBm, and I'm going to insert that here as a marker, and because I don't know which one of those is mine, this is just one way to do it, and if I insert this, see, that, see the amplitude of that one jump way up right here, watch this one, watch this one right here, and when I pull it off, I'll put it on, see? So there, there's there's the station I like to listen to out there. Certainly not one of the stronger ones. That's just one way to mark it. So that is that is a, a, a quickie of this type of uh, instrumentation from Tektronix back it's all around 19 early 1980s. Here's another spectrum analyzer. This is called a um, 7L5. You see these things out on eBay. This one goes up to 5 megahertz. I don't use it that much uh, because it does not do a very good job of audio. So I'm either doing audio or I'm doing some VHF, UHF stuff. So this one does not serve me very well. It has two different kind of plug-in units. One of them is this guy right here. And another one is, is this little fellow over here. So you can pull this out and swap them. This is a 50 ohm, as you can see. This one gives you uh, 75 ohms, 1 meg ohm, or 600 ohms. So that's probably the better one to have. Um, but for audio, in my opinion, this is the one to have. The 3580A. So that's a quickie rundown of the instrumentation I have. Uh, the output of see this is an output right here of this instrument this is back to the 8903 audio analyzer made by uh, Hewlett Packard beautiful instrument love this thing took me a long time to actually decide to buy one but I am so pleased with it because it scans 
but you'll actually see that uh, just by coincidence look here 94.96 millivolts of AC noise that I'm just picking up from wherever and there's the same number up there 94.9 see 0.0949 volts which would be if you turn this into millivolts, it'd be 94.9 millivolts. Here it is, 94.9. So they're just amazingly accurate. Here's 0.1% THD percent. There's a frequency, 969 hertz. I don't know, where am I getting that from? Oh, I guess I'm getting it from here. I guess I must have it attenuated. I don't know. Yeah, I've got it turned way down. There it is, minus 20. Anyway, it's actually real. So uh, I hope this helps if you're thinking about buying an instrument. Um, you know, if you can get a good one, if you can get a good 7904 mainframe, you have an enormous choice of uh, modules to plug in. You can just do darn near anything with it. This little scope right here is absolutely beautiful, but it's a little more fancy. The 2467, I think the, 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 the top dog is the 2467 be. Now, I am not affiliated in any way whatsoever with Tektronix. I don't buy or sell their stuff for any profit whatsoever, but I buy these from a seller out on eBay. And they are actually Tektronix. And they're selling off a lot of their stuff. They sometimes have things for sale. They don't. It's not always out there. They're called Chips XS. I don't know if I should advertise for them or not. C-H-I-P SXS, I think is what they're called. I've got some really, really nice stuff from them uh, at really good prices. And uh, forgive me if I uh, if I'm not supposed to advertise for them, and I'm not intentionally, but I just get some really beautiful stuff from uh, direct from Tektronix. In their, uh, I mean, this is old stuff. This is 30 year old stuff, but I guess they have a lot of it in their labs, or heck, I don't know where they. Where it comes from, and I bought a, a number of items from them. So there it is. Hope this helps. If you're thinking about buying or using these old instruments, and I'm sure that there are people out there that have and use these instruments just like I do, that are going to comment, and I'm going to learn something. I'm going to learn uh, some functions of these instruments that I did not know existed and that is the beauty I think of uh, of YouTube